we often wonder why. Why does one person seem more motivated than the other? Why does one person seem more driven than the next? It's a question that I think deserves further reflection. I believe that society in general can be a forceful driver. We are told or taught from a very young age that to be successful in life, we should work hard and study hard, and good things will come. We often measure our success by those good things, material objects, financial rewards, or positions in society. In a nutshell, money and fame. Many define being driven as being motivated, that being described as an inner force, a push from some place inside each of us to have and act in a certain way to be successful. When I was a young child, my mother hung a poem on my bedroom wall by Helen Steiner Rice entitled, Climb Till Your Dreams Come True. It inspired me to have a plan, to set goals, to reach my hopes and dreams, and so I did. I set goals, and I was motivated to reach them. Actually, I was driven to achieve them. Throughout my childhood and teenage years, into adulthood and even today. When I was just nine years of age, I told everyone that I possibly could or that would listen that I wanted to be a lawyer and a member of parliament because I wanted to help people. I also wanted to have a family and a comfortable home and a successful career before politics, and, and, and. I had a lot of wants, but I was brought up to believe that slow and steady wins the race. So I mapped out my life goals and worked diligently towards them. Now I'm certain that nearly everyone in this room has set goals at some time in their life, and perhaps they're more ambitious than the ones that I set. As a young teenager, my goals seemed rather simple not too difficult to achieve. Play piano, teach piano. Put myself through law school, teach piano and practice law. I know that's a bit nutty. Get married and have four or five children. I know that was also a bit nutty. And after I was 50 and my children were grown, run for politics. For a very, very long time, I was highly driven to be successful. And to me, that meant reaching my goals by accomplishing things, finishing things, getting things done. I had made this plan for my life and I was working toward the results that I thought I wanted. And as I said, I know I was driven for a very long time. However, one thing I also know for sure, that along the path of life, no matter how much you may plan, life will throw you some curveballs. Just when I thought I was at the top of my game, I had a bit of a wake-up call. In my busy life as a member of parliament, trying to be all and do all, I got caught up in the importance of the what, and I lost focus of the why. My good friend Michelle, who was also my hairstylist at the time, set me straight. Now, for the men in the room, this might not make a lot of sense or sound very important to you, but every woman knows that you want and you need a good relationship with your hairstylist. I had a hair appointment one afternoon and so did my mom, so we drove together. Mine was first, but I had this very important errand I needed to do, so I figured my mom could take my time slot and I would take hers. Sounds really simple, but it really wasn't. My mom was getting her hair colored that day and I was just getting a haircut. I dropped off my mom and without asking, I drove away. I gave absolutely no consideration to the fact that the time allotments and processes for hair color versus a haircut are very different. Michelle was none too impressed and with good reason. Some of you can just imagine what I did to her day. I totally messed it up. Later she told me flat out that if I thought if I did not think I should say that her time was as valuable as my time, then this relationship was going to end. It was a reminder and a very, very important one. It reminded me that everyone's time is equal and that everyone is to be respected and their needs taken into account. 
and it is an important message to carry throughout my life. Not sure how many of you may have had a similar wake-up call, but no matter how driven we are to get something done, we need to be respectful of others and their time and their lives and commitments. Often we forget this. We get so caught up in our busy worlds. We think our time, our commitment, our job, our role is more important than others. And in the process of being so busy, so driven to get something done, we forget why. Why are we driving ourselves so hard in the first place? Why are we so driven? In life, we will have many lessons. They could come to us as challenges, opportunities, or even a nasty curveball. It's how we react to them that will really determine success. So thinking back in 2004, I woke up the day after the federal election. Retired by my constituents from my ultimate dream job as a member of parliament. I admit, I was a little shell-shocked at first. Do you remember my life plan? Now, in case you forgot, it seemed I was already at the end of it. Member of Parliament after 50. Well, the problem was, I'd been elected at 30. And now I was only 41. Without a husband, without children, and without a job. Reality hit me right in the face. My life was not working out as originally planned. But I had a great education, great job experience a loving and supportive family, a great group of friends, and my little house on the water that needed a lot of work. Was I really suffering? I admit, I did feel sorry for myself for a little while, but I was just licking my wounds from losing. It was not easy to figure out next steps, but I had some time to reflect while I was painting the inside of my kitchen cupboards. And I was reminded of one of my life's incredible altering moments. It was a trip to Ethiopia in northern Lalabella where I first witnessed extreme poverty. Nothing had quite prepared me for it. The stench in the warm air getting off the plane, the barren landscape and farm fields, and the very, very thin, emaciated people working in the dry, hot fields for food. However, amongst all this tragedy and difficulty, I saw there were also children. Children that could smile and enjoy and appreciate the simplicity of life, playing sticks and stones in the dirt. I knew I was so fortunate to be born where I had been, and seeing such tragic situations really brought that home. I knew I had to do more. It was during this trip that I vowed to follow Gandhi's philosophy, be the change you wish to see in the world. And I spent the next two years working towards change in the developing world. So I realized that morning in 2004, I could still be that change. It was not the job that I was doing or the position that I had that was driving me. It was my inner self. It was my need to help people that wanted to make change. Remember that little nine-year-old girl that wanted to help people? I just had to find and reignite her passion. So I went back to practicing law and found a new way to make that change through work with local and international boards. We all experience a setback in life from time to time or a loss that is real or difficult. It's not the loss or the disappointment that defines us as it's not the position or the opportunity that truly drives us. It's our inner self. It's the why. For me, it was why did I want to be a lawyer? To help people. Why did I want to be a member of parliament? To help people. It sounds so simplistic, and in a way it truly is. It happens to be at the core of who I am. I am driven to certain roles in life so I can help people. I finally understood that was my why. And I quickly realized I could have a different job, a different role, and still help people. I could still be that change in the world that I wished to see. So life continues to evolve. And after a few years, my inner peace was no longer satisfied. I felt the need and the urge to do more. So I sought out a new opportunity. I found myself working in Toronto with the Cancer Society. And just when I thought I had things figured out again, and was at the top of my life plan, again, 
I received a diagnosis of advanced stage breast cancer. My world was rocked to its very core. Now, this is not a woe is me talk, but there is no doubt I was very, very scared and I was very, very angry. There were a lot of why me's. I'd been proactive, I exercised, I ate well, I did not smoke and I did or drink a lot, just the odd glass of wine here and there. I had regular mammograms and ultrasounds. Nothing had quite prepared me for those words, breast cancer, stage three. During treatment though, I learned a lot about myself, surprisingly to me, much of it through others. One nurse stood out in particular and her name was Julie. I was a bit quiet one day and she sensed my unease. Julie reassured me, and she told me that she had no doubt I was going to make it. In her role, she had witnessed many patients, and she told me she could tell I would win this battle. She had seen other patients drag themselves in, already defeated, and she wanted to tell them to just stay home and enjoy their final days. But she said she knew I would make it. My attitude, my determination, my drive. And with her words, she inspired me to do more. I realized right then and there that every day really is a gift and that I could accomplish things, do things to be that change in the world. And I did. I joined the Canadian Breast Cancer Foundation Board and left no stone unturned in my mission to be an advocate for better breast cancer screening. I offered my body and my treatment plan to research and participated in every study that I could. I was once again driven to help others, those that would come after me in treatment. It is that why that got me through a difficult and an incredible journey. So though nothing had quite prepared me for either the extreme poverty I witnessed or my life-altering health diagnosis and the way they both rocked my world and changed my perspective on life, upon further reflection, I realized that I had been driving myself into the ground, trying to do it all and trying to be all to everyone, to live up to the expectations that only I had set for myself. And along the way, I lost focus of the why. Why was I working so hard? I actually realized it was not the what that should be driving me or motivating me, it was the why. And to be truthful, I believe that society may have it all wrong. When we ingrain in our youth, that to be successful in life, they need to work hard by studying hard first, we must also remind them and hopefully show them that they also need to be respectful, compassionate, and understanding of others. And it should be simple. Teach them the why along with the what. The good news is it's never too late to change at any age. So I believe the challenge in one's life is to figure out the why. Today, I know it's the why that drives me. Problem is, my life plan. It stopped around 50. Now, 50 seemed old when I was 20. Today, I know I have another 30 years or so to go. So where am I going next? I don't really know. All I do know is that I'm not at the end of my plan or even my next stop. The whys are still there. And they may not be simplistic as they once were for a nine-year-old little girl, but they still exist. Why haven't we discovered a cure for cancer or a better drug for Alzheimer's? Why do we lose sight of the importance of research and investment? And why are there children still going to bed hungry in the world? All the years of hard work have prepared me for my next plan. How do I get to answer those whys and maintain balance in my life? It's not where I'm going next in life that matters to me as much as why do I need to do something more? My life has not worked out as originally planned, but what I learned along the way is that what really matters is how you deal with the curveballs that are thrown at you in life. Success in life, in my humble opinion, is truly defined by the challenges you are given. Today, there would be no correlation to the original graph of my life plan if I was to chart it out. It'd be a straight line up, and what it would look like now with all those twists and turns I've had along the way. But if I had to do it all over again, 
I would still highly recommend that everyone have a plan with hopes and dreams that answer your why. Because hopes and dreams don't go away when challenges happen. They only become that much more important. They are what truly drives us. My advice to you in life, plan big, live deeper. Have a plan and don't be afraid to make it adjustable along the way. You'll take left and right turns. You may have some stops and starts. You may even want to back up a bit. But as long as you remember the why within you, it'll help you guide your way through that plan. Every day is certainly a gift, and we may not know where we are going next. But wherever it is, remember to keep your eyes wide open so that along the way, you can be that change in the world that you wish to be. And when challenges, opportunities, or obstacles come your way, reflect on the why you are driven, and you'll be able to knock them right out of the park. I know why I'm driven. Do you know why you are driven? Thank you.